<laughs> oh man. All right, there you go. Hello, 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 everyone. I had to wait for that record button to start. <laughs> Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Geek Vibes Live Review. Um, as always, I'm your host, Tia, and I have with me today, Kelly. How are you doing? Hey, Tia. I'm doing well. You made me smile for a couple seconds more than I would have liked in the beginning there, waiting for the record button. But <laughs> other than that, all good. It's only really on the phone when I do Skype. If I'm doing it on the computer, it doesn't take that long. But I've noticed that it does. And it's even more uncomfortable when I'm, say, doing an interview with someone. And it's like, they're just sitting there. I'm just sitting there. It's like, hey, we're just sitting here for these awkward moments. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. But um, yeah, Kelly and I are here for another episode of Unsolved Mysteries. And... And we are on episode four, which um, was the Alonzo Brooks case. And Kelly and I, before this, kind of sat down and, you know, trying to figure out what the best way is to approach this, because it obviously deals with so much racism, which this case um, first happened 15 years ago, and it is still so prevalent in America today. So uh, before we go any further, I mean, Kelly, did you have anything that you wanted to say? Or I mean, what were your overall thoughts on Alonzo Brooks's case? Um, Yeah, I just, you know, I think that we'll never be able to fully unpack this episode because the issues here run so deep and it's something a big movement we're seeing right now with black lives matter i i personally believe that this was a hate crime um the evidence seems to point to that so um you know i just hope that we do alonzo justice and uh actually they just you gave me an update yesterday they reopened the case correct Yeah, so I wanted to say before we went any further in the episode is the episode ended with them saying that it was a cold case and that they didn't want to at first charge this with a hate crime, but we just got an update that they just exhumed Alonzo Brooks's body, they are reopening the case, and that it is going to be counted as a hate crime. And this, I think, is what unsolved mysteries is all about while it of course presents us with these horrific cases it also is the opportunity for i see alvi there (laughs) um no it's okay um i was just gonna say it's the opportunity for more information to come out so i am very happy about that so Alonzo Brooks was a young African-American who I think they said he was 23 years old and um, he went to a house party with some friends, um, seemingly having a good time, although it is made to be, it is, what am I trying to say? It is made to be known. That sounds weird, that like line there. I hear that it wasn't. I I don't know what you're trying to say, but it was clear that it wasn't a house party that he seemed welcome to. Correct, because he was a person of color. They made it seem that he was the only person of color in this party, which I wanted to say that to me when, first of all, this is 15 years ago, which to me, it doesn't seem that long ago. But of course, this stuff happens even to this day. But it is always just so strange to me when you hear these stories of someone who you know is a person of color who goes to a house party where or any event where the rest of the people who are there are white and they deal with such racism when they go they were they were saying that he was being called the n-word that he was racial slurs and people were picking fights with him um you know obviously singling him out Yeah, and it's so odd because of someone who grew up in New York that I grew up in an incredibly diverse area. Every school I went to was insanely diverse. So when you hear stories like this, especially in modern time, it just seems very strange. But this is what Alonzo had to deal with going to this house party. And his friends who took him there were white as well, but they say that 
you know, race didn't matter to them, that they didn't even think about anything like that. But of course, they recognized that the area that they were living in, that's what uh, Alonzo had to deal with. So at some point, uh, his friend Justin, who had brought him to the house party, and Alonzo didn't know any of these other people except for his group of friends. Justin says that at some point he went and left to get some cigarettes and got lost. And when he called to tell Alonzo that he had gotten lost, apparently, according to Justin, Alonzo said that he was going to catch a ride back with another guy. I believe his name was Adam. um, And that was the last that was seen of him. Now, I saw someone point out online and I was like, yeah, that is strange. We never. Where is Adam? in all of this because we see i rewatched this morning and Uh and i thought i like kept rewinding so i'm like am i missing an adam here he wasn't in the interviews correct he wasn't because they interviewed justin because i know at some point that uh, one of alonzo's childhood friends did bring up well why was alonzo left there you know why would this justin guy or you know any of the other guys leave him there but They didn't necessarily say leave him there. They thought he was catching a ride back with an Adam, but we never saw an Adam. We never were, an Adam was never interviewed and Adam was never mentioned again. So, I mean, really, uh, we need to kind of not only fault Adam, but just know what the hell happened with this Adam. Well, not even Adam. So I also uh, grew up in a diverse area and went to school um, with people from all different backgrounds. And um, I just know from experience when we used to go to parties back in the day, uh, it wasn't, you know, any race, religion, anything was singled out. It was a mix. But I would never leave a girlfriend there unless like it was with someone I knew very well. Um, Everything seemed very fishy. So I know that through the series, they said that they passed polygraph tests. They were um, investigated by the FBI. They went through rigorous interviews, but something just really like, seemed off to me, especially just watching them tell the story, almost like there was no emotion behind the words. And the whole leaving for a cigarette thing and uh, got lost, but still didn't come back. I don't know. Just, it doesn't add up to me. Um, I'm not saying that the friends were directly involved, but I think they were super neglectful. And if you were really a true friend and you cared you would know to ask questions like are you comfortable here or how are you feeling or do you need anything and if they're noticing that people are using racial slurs or attacking him verbally or physically i mean that's a situation i would take a friend out of immediately i wouldn't stay at the party you know i don't know why some of the guys went to the other party and they didn't all follow But I also found it strange that his, you know, best childhood friend, I think his name was Rodney. Um, Yeah, I, I, for some reason, didn't write that down. So I'm going to take your, your (laughs) word for it. The one, the one who questioned. Sorry, but you know, his, his one, uh, you know, best friend from childhood had never met these individuals You know, they went back to the scene of the party. He even felt uncomfortable. People told him to get off the property. And that was just them going back to showcase the scene and, 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 you know, replay what happened. Um, So the fact that his best friend and these friends never met, they left him there at the party. They didn't seem to bring up, oh, we think it's weird that everyone's hating on our friend. We're not even sticking up for him. I just feel like there's a huge like gap there of what should have been done and what wasn't done. I mean, there's a difference between saying like, hey, we grew up in a diverse area. So like race means absolutely like nothing to us. It means no big deal. But to that 
but to not realize that in the area that you're in, it does re- mean something and that someone is being targeted for their race and to kind of be blind is another thing. So it's like you can say that, OK, these friends just, you know, viewed him as a normal guy, which you should. But read the room. He while you were there, he was getting stares. He was being called certain names by others. As you said, why would you leave someone like that alone at a party I when? Alone, but why would you stay? I would take. Why my would you stay? Yeah. Situation immediately and just say this is not the type of crowd we should be around. Let's go have fun somewhere else, and that's that. And I mean, and you can say like for us, we're women, right? So we were always taught the buddy rule and maybe boys weren't taught that necessarily, but still, why would you leave a friend there? Um, You can blame it a little on saying like, oh, well, they were young, but they were, they were like 23, 22. You should have had just some common sense there. And as you said, why wouldn't, first of all with Justin right was it ever brought up that he even tried to call Alonzo after that like after being told that Adam would drive him home did anyone you know look to even check up on him like oh I don't know like Adam and him must have missed each other or didn't cross paths didn't you have a conversation with him it just the the story in the timeline didn't seem to add up. And I really, you know, I I felt that way the first time watching it, but watching it again, I was like, this is the most bullshit thing (laughs) I am listening to, excuse my language. But when you really listen to it back, see the coldness and lack of emotion telling the story, and then just all these gaps that don't make sense. I really don't know how an investigation took place in the first, you know, place, and they didn't say, wow, none of this adds up. I mean, clearly something's going on here. Whether the friends were involved or not, they still made some very bad decisions, and they didn't seem, like, regretful in any way or hurt or sad or guilty or whatever emotion someone might feel maybe even anger. I just didn't feel any of that from any of, except the family. I was going to say any of the people interviewed, but any of his friends interviewed except his family and his best friend. And I'll move on from the friends in just two seconds. But so they interviewed three guys, right? Who were at that party. Justin at some point seemed like he was forcing his emotions when it seemed like he should be forcing those emotions. Like when he was being blamed for maybe the negligence. Right. And then you had, I believe his name was Daniel, the one who was wearing the baseball cap. I will say that I maybe felt a little regret from him where he was saying, if I was there, I would have, you know, went down swinging as well, but why weren't you there? And then there was the third friend who really seemed as if he was speaking about Alonzo as if he wasn't really a friend, like, like an acquaintance almost. I don't know if you know who I was talking about. Yeah, he's I- like the third guy that like the third white guy that they interviewed he just really didn't seem like Alonzo meant anything to him. And so I don't know if it was Justin being just really negligent and not thinking there, or if that was sort of a nefarious sort of situation. Daniel, I will say, again, he felt a little bit more sympathetic, but why wasn't he there, as you said, and so that whole drive to like rehearsed almost um like everyone just had this concrete story down that they had told a million times and um you know there could have been alcohol and drugs involved and maybe they didn't remember jack shit but still i felt like that that vibe of just cold-heartedness when i was listening to the story Well, it also felt like they were being too concerned with trying to uphold their own image instead of taking accountability. Just come out and say that you were being negligent, you weren't thinking, and that that was wrong of you um, instead of maybe being so defensive. But I wanted to move on from that because then we have, so we have the friends and how they didn't really 
uphold being good friends. But then we also had the law enforcement, how they, so first of all, the crazy thing was they didn't allow the family to search for about a month or so. Um, and them saying that he must have fallen into the water where they found him. But as I think the brother pointed out, uh, his shoes were, you know, separated from him. So why would he be walking around shoeless? And Maria, the mother, pointed out that all of his belongings were in pretty good condition considering he was supposedly in the water for a month. And then... Evidence that pointed to that to him being in the water for an extended period of time like that. Yeah, and the, um, oh God, I forgot what they're even called. The like medical examiner said that he couldn't conclusively come up with a um, cause of death. So that all seemed very fishy. And you and I had spoken about this, that you had felt that the police were very quick to, first of all, dismiss that, oh, this is just a kid missing. This is what they do. When Maria was saying that they were a very close knit family, Alonzo would never do that. And the police seemed like they were very much wanted to cover this up and not really even look into it. Right. And then they searched a number of times, maybe let's say like four or five different times, they brought the scuba divers in um, and there was no evidence whatsoever that he had been in that creek or lake or whatever the official term for that is. Um, so even when they talked to those guys later, they said if something was there, if there's a body there, we would have found it. Like this isn't a deep creek at all. Um, so we're not talking about going you know, 20 feet deep. This was a couple feet deep at most when the water was high and on the usual days it was low. Um, you know, so, and then the first day they give the family permission to go search the site. He's right there out in the open. It, it just, to me, seems like a cover up. Um, I do personally think the police were involved at some level. Um, because you can't, like, it just doesn't add up. Yeah. They were so quick to dismiss it, put it under the category of being unsolvable. They'll never know. And the fact is that we didn't, so they interviewed the friends, right? We didn't see one interview from the people at the party. And even the friend Daniel did say that it seems like they didn't even care to interview the friends at the party. Um, there was a room in my notes. The house, by the way, because upon like the first visit to the house, they said no one owned it. And upon like later in the episode, when they when one of the sheriffs or someone was talking, they said it was. Uh, owned and the kids had been evicted since then. So was the house empty or was someone evicted later? That they didn't make clear either. Yeah, I mean, was there even a party? Because that was another. That was another. Um, you know, uh, God conspiracy there, right? That we saw some people were saying online that really it was just a ploy to get Alonso out in the middle of the woods to torture him, which is so horrible to even think about that people could have that amount of hate in their heart and that amount of deception when he seemed like a very good kid from what Maria, the mother said, the brother, um, the childhood friend. So you know, to even fathom that is just so horrible to think about. But um, I sent, and I, I don't mean to smile here, but I had sent Kelly my notes, which are always just a jumbled up mess. And she was like, what do you mean, white girl? Because <laughs> I put that down because they said at some point at the party that they surmised because Alonzo was speaking to some white girl there that that could have also been cause for the other people at the party to be mad at Alonzo. And so did they ever find this girl? Did they ever interview this girl? 
girl. Did they ever interview anyone? It seemed so suspicious to me. Um, and for them to just quickly dismiss a case of a person who was so beloved by their family just seemed very odd. It seemed like the brother and the brother's wife were doing more of an investigation than the actual police were. Yeah, and I mean, they had even noticed that there was a shed there, and now there's not a shed there um, yeah. on the property, which super sketchy. Um, I do think that, you know, there was foul play intended crime here, and I think that his body was probably held there for a while before they had, um, you know, dumped it by the um, creek. So it's just fishy that things were there they're not there no one's in the home like you said was there a party oh we searched and searched and searched nothing there and then the family goes for the first time and oh he's he's right there like you know but you know, they did say the coroner the coroner said or medical examiner did yeah. say you know it was hard to tell if he was strangled because animals had gotten to him and whatnot and to me that also seemed suspicious. Like, why are you coming to the conclusion that it is animals? Um, like, did you find animal DNA there or fur or whatever? What it, like, how do you know that wasn't man? Bite marks or something. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, did you feel like the medical corn, I think that's their, their title, coroner. Did you feel like, he I was we should know what they're called <laughs> medical examiner i think i don't know that's why we have to go back and rewatch i zombie but um did you find that the medical examiner did you think that he was in on this cover-up conspiracy along with the police yeah he seemed like almost like i cannot be bothered by these cameras here like that was yeah. that was the um aura that I was getting from him he just didn't seem to give a care in the world and I know in that field you have to have a very specific personality to be dealing with dead bodies all the time and and family who have lost loved ones it's got to be hard and you probably get a little numb to it but he just nothing there was nothing yeah. there and he didn't even go into depth about it he was just like yeah I couldn't tell blah 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 He's probably in the water. Oh, well then how come there's no water in his chest and none of his possessions look like they've been in the water? Like, Well, that's what bothered me so much about this episode is that there really seemed to be no details. No one seemed to want to go any further than what was surface level. And that was so irritating here because it's you know you're talking about someone's life and you're talking about very mysterious circumstances and seemingly a chunk of time that is completely erased and as you said then going to the house and discovering that no one lives there I mean how does that happen there's a party and what two days later everyone's gone it just seems so yeah, suspicious this episode was heart-wrenching yes but also made me angry um I just felt like the due diligence wasn't there I felt like the care and consideration apart from the the family and the childhood best friend wasn't there and everything just seemed to fit too perfectly not hold on let me take that back nothing fit together but everyone's yeah. story seems like so rehearsed and yeah. I just can't get out of my mind that this was one big cover up with a lot of people in on it. And I know they showed like all the different theories people were writing online, right? In the episode, yeah. not after the episode aired, but during the episode. And so many people were writing, you know, the people of whatever county or city or town they were in know what happened. Like it just, so many people seemed so sure that they had answers, just no one was coming forward with them. Yeah, the whole thing was very suspicious. I feel so bad for the family, the mother who, you know, just wants justice for her child. And I will say that the one good thing to come from this episode is that they are, re well, they have officially reopened the case. They've exhumed the body and hopefully with more competent people and 
the social climate that we're in, hopefully there will be justice for Alonzo. If there is justice for one person in this whole entire series, because all of them are unsolved cases, obviously, I do hope that they are able to find Alonzo's murder because it was only 15 years ago. There sh- it should be able to be solved. And I just think I that they weren't that doing what they were supposed to. Involved. I don't know yeah. why. That's just my personal opinion and takeaway that there was a lot of hands in this. Um, and I think a lot of people legit contributed to his death. Um, you know, maybe only one person was the one that pulled the final stroke. But I just have a a very bad feeling that this was not a good situation for him to be in. The the party just seems like a very hateful um, atmosphere. And I just, I'm still so baffled that his friends either didn't say anything or recognize it or take him out of that situation I mean, I don't care how many drinks I have in me. If my friend's getting harassed, yeah, I'm either going to get into a fight or I'm going to take them out of that, you know, situation. So I just, the, to me, that friendship didn't feel authentic. Um, and, and you can say, oh, well, hindsight is always 20 but I feel like, even so, you know, as an adult, right, we're in our 30s and you try and go with the more <laughs> you try and go with the more reserved. Like if you're if either of us are being harassed, it's like, OK, let's just leave. It's better to remove ourselves. But in your young 20s, especially guys, you're all hot headed, you're drinking. You would think immediately the friends would be like, yo, what the hell are you saying to my friend right now? Like what? what are we in 2020? What was 15 years ago? Uh, 2005? Like, hello, it's 2005. Who's racist anymore? You know? And the fact that they just sat there and allowed their friend to be harassed and then allowed their friend to stay in that environment with supposedly only one friend left, Adam, is just ridiculous. It really is. So uh, yeah, I have no idea. Adam is going to take care of him. Adam will, yeah, Adam will drive him home. And we don't have any voice recordings. All we have is Justin's words saying, oh, yeah, I spoke with Adam and Alonzo was in the background and I was hearing him say, oh, I'll just have Adam take me home. Okay. Okay. But I also uh, find it funny if you went 20, what did he say? 20 minutes, 30 minutes north in the wrong direction. That means, I mean, you saw what it the topography was out there what the landscape was he there it was like a single road so if he turned yeah. around he had to have been near or past that house and he just didn't stop yeah the whole thing was suspicious um we could obviously turn our wheels over and over again with this but i think that unless you have any else that you want to touch upon with this i think that we just kind of got to the basis of it which really is it just seems like an entire cover-up i agree um and i I think good comes out of the case being reopened i really do oh me as well um i just am hoping that they'll actually find what the hell happened because this was a young kid and his family is suffering and they need answers 100 percent. so i mean you never know what might happen if you're listening to this and you know information please um you know let officials know and hopefully bring some justice for Alonzo Brooks. But I will also suggest before I let Kelly take a hold of this, you have to uh, read Kelly's review for Zach Efron's Down to Earth because it is the perfect thing to watch after watching something so heart wrenching and intense like this. But But Kelly, before we sign off, um, let everyone know what we can expect from you, where we can find you and all that jazz. Um, You know, I I say the same thing every time I need to do. (laughs) I need to come up with something fun for the next one, especially since I think the next one is finally the UFO one. Um, It is finally the UFO one. (laughs) uh, So I'm just going to say I love to chat. So feel free to reach out to me whenever you want. I'm at I'm on Twitter at Kate Cantrow. Um, 
And if I'm not going to spell that out for the 500th time, you could just go to the Geek Vibes page and you'll find me on there somewhere. Yes, absolutely. Please, everyone, check that out. Um, of course, you can check me out as well on Geek Vibes Nation, um, TFAB, Twitter, and Instagram. What did you say? Check me out. Check me out. Um, we have plenty of podcasts, review shows. We did the previous three of Unsolved Mysteries season 15. So you can check that out. Um, and of course, just give us a like, subscribe. Let us know what you'd like us to review next. And it's been wonderful speaking with you. And as we said, again, if you have any information about Alonzo Brooks, please uh, contact your local authorities and let them know. Um, but yeah, uh, everyone, thank you. This has been Geek Vibes Review. I'm Tia. This is Kelly. And have a great day. Bye. Bye.